There's some rhythm. Stanley, Chris Stanley F5, and this is serial number 11. Yes, it is serial number 11. He calls it a V5, serial number 11. And uh, I have this is funny because I actually worked on this mandolin before. Um, another friend of mine owned it, and I put a new nut on it, and then uh, did a little bit of a setup, and off it went again. And <clears throat> month, about a month ago, I got an email from a guy who wanted me to work on his Stanley mandolin. And he was having a little bit of trouble up here on the, on the upper part of the fretboard. There's a little bit of a hump right in there. Oh, it needed a general setup. The bridge was kind of tilting a little bit. And he wanted me to take a look at it. So he sent it to me. And I took one look at this nut here. And I said, that's mine. I've, done, I've worked on this before. So I checked with my first friend. And sure enough, this was the mandolin. So uh, it was kind of fun to see it again. Even though it had been many years. So um, this time around, I refretted it. And I use uh, stainless steel frets. I use the, the thin stainless steel. Um, I kind of prefer thin frets on mandolins because I have kind of fat fingers. And I seem to get a clearer tone with, with the uh, thinner, fret, thinner frets. Uh, my fingers seem to fit better in between there. I don't know. I just get a clearer tone with them. And being stainless steel, they should last for a long, long time, which is one of the main criticisms of thin frets is that they wear out too fast. But on the other hand, when the, when the thicker frets wear out, the crown wears down like this and you get a flat surface right here and the intonation gets kind of sloppy on them. So I really don't like fat frets on mandolins. I like thin frets. But I like them full height too. I don't like them um, small at all. So I refretted it and when I did, I took all the frets off. I, I got the fingerboard nice and flat again, resurfaced it. The edge of the fingerboard right here went up like this. And I've seen this. This is fairly common on uh, some makers. They come up like this and all the way to the edge and then they dive off so that the edge of the fingerboard feels really sharp. And what I did here when I had the frets off is, is scrape this flat like this and then curve it. So the fingerboard comes up and then curves and then goes over and rolls the edge. Feels a lot, lot better in my hands. Um, I scalloped this out right here. A lot of times I like to uh, go ahead and scallop it with the frets in place so that the tangs stay in there and it's really hard to see from a distance. But this one, the tangs came out as I was doing it, so I had no choice but to go ahead and do the uh, traditional kind of scallop, maybe. All right, the bridge was also leaning forward a little bit, so I re um, reshaped the bottom of it and I actually made it tilt back a couple of degrees. It's kind of hard to see, but it is tilting backwards just a little bit. And that that's a violin trick. It kind of counteracts the angle of, of the string here and um, pushes the bridge. And it tends to give it a little bit more of a biting tone, which, you know, a mandolin, there's nothing wrong with that. So that's all I do to this mandolin, which is quite a bit of work, actually. But it sure plays nice now. When it first came in, it really um, it was difficult for me to play. I'd pick up my other mandolins and, and then I'd play my other mandolins and then pick up this one and it was um, just didn't feel right. And now I'm having trouble with it. So I adapt to it real well. So it's a good China mandolin, no question about that. Here's what the back looks like. Really nice mandolin. I believe the neck has been reshaped from the original. It seems like it had a much chunkier neck and it's been reshaped into um, a soft 
rounded V. It's still um, a chunky neck, but it, it feels really nice now. Very comfortable. I mean, like I said, I have no no problem playing this man then. So, anyway, Chris Stanley, number 11. Thank you. 